Hello everyone, uh, this is Boots on the Ground podcast and I'm your host Biblex Lesalon. Today we are doing a very, very exciting segment in partnership with my brother. Um, I've hosted him on this podcast before and um, I'm, I'm so excited to have this conversation with him today um, and he's none other than our Felix Ongoma. Karibu sana Felix to the show. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to be back. Fantastic. And today... Um, we will be talking about partnerships, you know, why, why are partnerships, um, you know, important and what, how we will tell you our experiences uh, of how we've partnered together or how we've partnered with other people in our careers and um, how that looks like. And uh, maybe to just start, start us off, we will be both defining, um, you know, what partnerships, what we understand uh, by, by partnership. And uh, I think for me, um since way back uh, you know the way africa was set up we we have always you know come together you can remember like the first president of this country mze jomo kenyatta you know with his, with his harambe uh, slogan you know just pulling together as africans you know with in, with unity peace you know we also have the Nyumba Kumi initiative, which is, you know, neighbors just having, you know, a good time and, you know, taking care of each other's, you know, um, needs, you know. And also we have the Ubuntu a philosophy, I think, uh, originally from Africa, you know, I am because you are. So I think for me, partnerships mean, you know, um, driving towards a, a common goal you know you can be one you can be two you can be five people five organizations five schools you know uh, uh, communities you know um, um, and what that looks like is you know driving towards a common vision and a common goal and maybe just to bring you in Felix uh, at this point uh, uh, what do you understand by you know partnerships I think for me partnership is people or different groups coming together with a shared goal whereby they want to achieve something, something together in unison, whereby this something they want to achieve, it's something even greater than them, or even greater than if only one person could have done it. So you come in together maybe towards independence, like you had said, uh, when we are getting our independence through our first president, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, yeah. or towards how Ubuntu is working, <coughs> like you need somebody to go to the next level and achieve, do something even better, even much better than you could have done it on your own. This is whereby the Pamoja Strong is coming in. You need someone else in order to go to the next level and achieve something. Like we saw... Even now, currently in Europe, we are seeing teams playing together in order to in order to get that cup. Like in England, are saying it's coming home, or <laughs> is it going to Rome? Yeah. <laughs> so it's a whole nation coming in together to supporting their team in order for them to in order for them to push the team to win the cup, so that it can be a national pride. Oh. I think we have also seen how Kenya. We normally do when we go to the Olympics through the, through our athletes. We normally the nation normally comes together as a whole and support those athletes who are currently now in Tokyo. And we normally do well in the long distance running. We see events all over coming in together so that we can just support our very own in order to, for them to achieve something. Yeah. Wow, that's a very, very interesting perspective you brought in. Um, I think sports, in a way, you know, it's a partnership and it brings, you know, people together and, you know, and uh, I wonder which team you'll be supporting in the final. Let me not go uh, to, to in, <laughs> into that, but uh, I know we, we will see, we will see, we will see. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, that's very interesting. And uh, I think maybe to just add on what you said about, you know, the government and the previous administrations and, you know, um, you know, building the successes on, on, on our former predecessors work and, you know, just taking the country forward. And, um, let's go into how partnerships have played out in, in our career. I remember, you know, just before graduating from Strathmore, um, um, 
we 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 went um, to to Samburu, you know, to to do a very interesting project there, yeah. and um, we visited uh, Namunya Conservancy to be specific, uh, Reteti Elephant Sanctuary, the first community ran and owned elephant sanctuary in Africa, and um, we were able to see how partnership. Uh, you know, played out between the local communities, you know, the women, uh, you know, the men there, you know, um, the, the, the owners or rather the, the donors or rather the, I, the, 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 the the guys behind this, you know, and we were able to see how they interact and how they, they do their work, you know, uh, you know, pulling together and, uh, you know, putting the resources together to save the elephant species and Felix, um, why why how 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 did that project you know how was it important to you at that point and how what did you get from that experience i think for me it was quite interesting when we were still at Stockholm university during our fourth year project i think initially i was supposed to go on my own and then i remember having a conversation with you whether we can go up north and I remember some of our classmates did not want to go because of the of the perception that the North is always insecure. Yeah. So I remember we asked for permission from the school and also from our parents. And then we boarded those matatus to Laikipia, to Nanyuki specifically. Mm. And then we also boarded another matatu now going somewhere i think relatively new to us yeah and we are arriving at at night i think the it was very interesting at first and maybe we could not i could have not done that if we had not partnered together to go and do the project together sure in Retreti. and i think that trip it's something it sparked something in us in relation to conservation and currently our works on what we are doing and also working on individually and also the conversations that we normally have. It's something I think we learned from the community how they came together in, uh, with the support of the of the camp. There's a camp there, Sarara Camp, and also through Lewa Conservancy. Yeah. I think how the three of them came together and set up Retreti Elephant Sanctuary, mm. or better known as Rescue whereby the community gave their land because there there used to be a lot of human wildlife conflict and also elephants, especially the, the calves, the babies, they used to be left behind. And most of the elephants elephants used to be taken all the way to Nairobi, mm. to David Sheldrick. Mm. And I think through that now the elephants can remain within the same environment that they are and the communities are taking care of them. And through this the community themselves are getting something out of it whereby the income generated by visitors who normally come also from the Sarara camp. Yeah. Which also brings, when the guests come and visit, stay at Sarara, they are normally taken to Reteti Elephant Sanctuary. And through this, they are getting income. And through this income, the community themselves are able to go the extra mile and pay for the, and pay for, scholarships or giving out scholarship to their kids. Mm. You know, their kids, are, they have come all the way from Samburu to Nairobi to the unis to learn something new and something that is going to help them later, and also for the community. Mm. And also they have health facilities. And I think I remember one month ago I shared how they are now doing the mobile, mobile classes mm. whereby they have a specific group which follows the community and set up because since it's a nomadic community. And this, it's something very unique, especially to Kenya and I think Africa generally. It's something very new because it's a partnership that's helping the community, also the conservation and economically also because I think I remember Wamba, Wamba town. Yeah, yeah. There's Wamba and also there's another town on your way to Mount Sabit. It has come to life because of these tourism activity and conservation activities. Yeah. Which is something that could not could have not been there. And I think through this we picked and came back home with it and 
we started doing something in relation to that because it inspired us to go the extra mile. And that's how I think I remember we came together again and started our own company. Yeah. Kiongozi. But but before we go there, before we go to Kiongozi, I think let me take you back a bit. Mm. I remember us, you know, um, on board a land cruiser, Mm. uh, you know, in that rough terrain, Saburu, you know, dust all over us and just reaching Retiti and seeing, you know, these local people. I think we were there in 2017. 2017. Yeah, a year uh, after Retiti was actually, you know, established. Mm. And, um, you know, it was really, really fascinating to see, you know, the local communities give up everything, give up their lives, you know, in the villages to just come here. And when you were collecting the data, you could see, you know, the passion in their eyes mm. and, you know, in everything that they were really sold out. Like they took ownership that this is our initiative. Yeah. You know, these are our our elephants, these are, we need to protect them. We need to step up. We need all hands on deck. We need to come together. And I think that project was one of the best and one of the best experiences for sure up to now. And, yes, um, uh, and looking back and looking at, you know, where Retiti has come from up to now, I think we can say that it, it has been a very big success story. And if such initiatives are, you know, scaled up, you know, and replicated to in, in, in different African countries, I think these are the linkages that we, we need, you know, to safeguard our bi- biodiversity. And, um, and uh, Felix, I think Shaba right now is, is all grown up. Eh? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> uh, actually, I went back there to do for volunteering. Yeah. I think I remember I went for, for, for four months. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't internship. I think it was volunteering uh-huh. because, yeah, something similar to internship. Interesting. Yeah. And Shaba was a little girl by then. I remember we were together with the, with the, with the keepers. We used yeah. to feed her milk through the bottles. And she was, she was quite playful and also quite protective to the younger calves. Wow. And I think, Last month, last week, through Emi Vitale, she is a known photographer in conservation and wildlife. Yeah. I think there is a movie that she released in relation to Shaba. Yeah. She had been following her life. And to see that, how I remember Shaba when she was still young and how, where she is now, I think it's quite fascinating to be part of that. Because yeah, it's something very unique to sure. have experienced. Yeah, and yeah. Um, we'll be looking out for for that film, and yeah. I'll be sharing that you know in in my social media uh, links. And um, as Felix was saying, after that project, I think um, that pushed us, you know, to rethink, to sit back and mm-hmm. say, what do we, what do we need to do? Yeah. And we 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 came up with with a very interesting idea, and um, we we tried to you know form a company. Um, a travel company really you know based on uh, wellness tourism yoga you know um adventure sports and um you know um a bit of uh, you know uh, conservation in it uh we did that for 7 months yeah for 7 months yeah um um yeah we did that, that for 7 months you know learned a lot you know networked a lot you know gave it our best it was a very good learning opportunity uh, for us and um <clears throat> it's through that th- this you know interactions and these you know little you know projects here and there that we 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 really saw that you know if people come together if people sit discuss and talk and come up with an idea this is what we want this is what we need to do this is what we have it it can surely be done and then later we we went our separate ways <laughs> maybe you can you can tell us um, what you've been up to <laughs> and how partnerships yeah. have played out, think, you know, so yeah. far. With Kiongos, it was quite nice because we worked together yeah. in forming a company because we wanted to do something different that's currently wasn't being done in, in Kenya per se because in Kenya we focus on the traditional tourism product. So we wanted to do something different. And I think this is what made us to to do something different, even though we weren't doing it uh, together. I think we normally consult a lot in, a, in nearly everything that we do, either through strategies or giving uh, each other advice, yeah. and also networking with, with a lot of people in our fields. Mm. So for me, I think I went, 
I went on doing more on working with communities, working with women. I think in Amboseli we worked with several women and I remember inviting you to one of the field trips that we normally, we, we normally had. Yeah. And it, it was also something interesting, I think, to to share with you because these these situations and these experiences, I think they are life-changing. Sure. And it's very interesting to see how other people live and their experiences and how they they, they perceive life mm. in relation to what you have been thinking of or what you have been doing here in the city because the life in the city is totally different to the one in the rural areas. Yeah. Yeah. And also currently now in the process of forming my own company, mm. and I think I've been talking to how we can work together through 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 your podcast. Yeah. And it's something I'm looking forward to integrate in relation to the work that we're currently doing. And this is quite good because we had come from uni, I think. If you come from uni and up to now, because in university in first year we are quite totally different people. Mm. And we weren't we hadn't known each other that <laughs> well. But <laughs> since twenty thirteen to now, I think those are Nine years Nine have years. known each other mm. and working together, <laughs> I think, in projects, group work, yeah. a lot of things. Yeah. And through this, I think I can say, as you continue working, going ahead into the future, yeah. I think this is how Pamoja Strong is un- un- unveiling itself. A reality. Yeah, for it's sure. a reality for yeah. sure. It yeah. needs yeah. somebody somebody you trust and somebody you sh- you're sharing some goals with mm. yeah, to achieve something even greater. Fantastic. And I remember even the first, you know, um, I went and, you know, uh, formed a podcast after, you know, um, COVID happened. Um, tourism and travel was at a standstill, was on life support, basically. And I remember the first, uh, I came and shared with, with you, you know, this idea of a podcast. Yeah. And I remember... The first episode we did together, actually, yeah, true. in Sagan, mm. in Sagana, sorry, and it was really interesting to just, you know, uh, put our voices out there and just tell people why we love Sagana and why this it's the best place you can be. Come and camp here, support local tourism, support local businesses, and I'm really happy that we were we managed to uh, go past that. Yeah, and. Um, I have I have been great, I have been fortunate, you know, to bring in a, a lot of guests in the, through this podcast, and um, I have partnered with uh, various organizations, for example, uh, Bar Life Africa, to just you know highlight um, critical issues. For example, we've done um, a series with them on ocean governance to just you know talk about the high seas and why the biodiversity is a the areas beyond national jurisdiction which are rich in biodiversity are are key, you know, in in ocean governance and ocean management. We also did a a, a podcast series on vultures, you know, just highlighting why vultures are important, you know, because we are just used to seeing vultures. These are, they look, uh, some people say ugly, you know, they eat carcasses, but they play a very critical role in the ecosystem. We also did uh, one on uh, the World Environment Day, um, in, 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 uh, also with, with a couple of, you know, partners across Africa. And uh, you can see really, and you can really tell that the kind of, you know, work that, you know, these organizations are putting in, you know, to restore our ecosystems, to ensure that, you know, our, our, our wildlife is safe and, uh, uh, is is really a lot of work and it requires you know dialogues you know all stakeholders we are talking local communities we are talking youth we are talking women you know we are talking law enforcement agencies we are talking the private sector you know all these people to just come together at the table and make decisions that are you know key to to restoring nature to 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 making us you know um I realized that we, we are all, you know, interdependent. And I think out of this COVID-19, I think the silver lining has been people have realized that this world can stand still and we are all at risk. But, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm loving the conversations that it has elicited, you know, the reactions, 
you know, we've seen uh, Felix, you know, climate strikes. Yeah? For example, yeah. Greta Thunberg, she started alone. But look at the influence she has had, you know, and the partnerships that she has been able to to amass, you know. For, for example, the Fridays for Future. You know, we have, uh, I also did um, a podcast with uh, a very interesting, you know, guy called uh, Sport BT, the CEO of Game Rangers International in Kafue in Zambia. And uh, the work he's doing there with the Rangers, you know, you, you, you cannot uh, protect wildlife alone. You need eyes and ears on the ground. And this is where the Rangers come in, you know. And he, he, he mentioned something really interesting uh, that, uh, you know, uh, a partnership is like a big molecule of various stakeholders. And if you remove one atom, it loses shape. True. So I think, you know, the conversation has to be has to be inclusive and we need these inclusive participatory approaches to realize the conservation dream to rea to improve livelihoods to ensure that our climate is safe our children the youthful population that is coming up in africa has you know a voice um, basically through this podcast of of I've, I've, I've learned a lot, I've partnered with various minds, I've brought in, you know, guys who are so passionate and and I think that is where Pamoja is strong, really. Uh, we have to give it a voice, really. True. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So the conversation, the conservation, conservation is for everyone. And um, I think we are all conservationists, Felix. Yeah. If you think about it and... Uh, because let's narrow narrow it down. Let's narrow down the conversation mm -hmm. to conservation because that is where we we are. That is where we are looking to have social impact, you know, and improve, you know, um, livelihoods and uh, you know see that uh, Africa uh, Africa is a different Africa. Trying to reimagine and rethink mm -hmm. how that looks like and. Um, I think through Pamoja Strong and through our own experiences and through the networks that we have, we can we can do a lot, really, right? Yeah, true. Yeah, really true. Yeah. So maybe you can just you know give us your um, uh, closing remarks and uh, and uh, how how Pamoja Strong uh, is is the way to go. How partnerships really are. Are, 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 is something uh, that we need to, to, to keep on going, to, to, to look out for, you know, if we, if, if we are to achieve our goals and objectives going forward. For me, I'll just conclude by the work I've done and also the work I perceive on doing in the future in relation to conservation and community, community development. I think these are areas that you need, you need a lot of partners and people with similar objectives or similar ideas yeah. who wants to to better the lives of, of our planet and also better the lives of the community living around wildlife and tourism destinations, mm. which is something very important because without the communities, I don't think we could have most of the wildlife that we normally have because these are the people who are living next to these animals. And if we don't partner with them and talk to them and educate them and make them aware of how conservation is working and the implications of it, of conservation, if they don't follow the, if they not, if they do not agree to, to also conserve and also through the sustainable, through the SDGs, yeah. I think it's going to, it's not going to be a win-win for the community and also for our planet Earth because we need each other. Mm. The planet needs the communities and the communities need the planet. Yeah. I think this is something that should be shared I think across different platforms. Yeah. And I know EU through their member states in Kenya, they especially the not going to go into specific country but you know, they support a lot of <coughs> work and community development projects, mm. especially in in rural areas. And also, I know EU in their development partnerships with Kenya, I think through healthcare, infrastructure development, energy, food security, this is something really important, I think, for the two countries, for not for the continent, 
for Europe as a whole and also Kenya to work towards bettering the lives of the different communities within the country. This is something really important and mm. this could not be achieved if you did not have a proper working relationship with Kenya, yeah. which is a partnership. Yeah, I think that's my, con- my conclusion. Fantastic. I totally agree with, with you, Felix. Yeah. And the future really is about partnerships and collaborations. Mm. And um, for a long time, communities had been alienated, you know, the voice true. on yeah. the ground, mm. you know. Um, people sat in boardrooms, made decisions about, you know, uh, a very big group of people. And I think the conversation is shifting right now. Mm. And I think we need to give local people a voice. Very true. You know, we need to give the local farmer a voice. Mm. How does climate change affect him? You know, and why Why does he think climate change is important? So I think mm. through having these conversations and through um, various organizations that are really looking to to better, you know, partnerships and to grow on in that direction, I think... Um, through partnerships, there's also, you know, things to do with long term, you know, uh, growth and uh, drive, you know, towards, uh, you know, economic growth. You, mm. For example, the United um, Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Mm. That's Very partnerships. Good. Yeah, That's partnerships right there. Yeah. Yeah. And we need to strengthen these collaborations regionally and globally. And um, it's through having these kind of conserv- co- conversations, sorry. Very and, true. um, yeah, that's it, guys. And um, maybe just to, to, to finish it off, uh, there is need for, you know, long, long-lasting synergies between, you know, um, various different stakeholders, various players, mm. you know, and including everyone in the conversation is really important. Mm. And that is what yeah. will guarantee our success. So I challenge us to be part of this conversation, mm. um, be part of this conversation, you know, and um, I think Pamoja Strong. Yes, Pamoja Strong. Pamoja Strong, Pamoja yeah. Strong. Thank you so much okay. for listening and um, have a great time. Goodbye, stay safe. Goodbye. Yeah. Thank you so much, our listener, for being part of this great conversation. And if you love listening to this podcast, Remember to subscribe on your favorite listening app for free today. Please be sure to rate and review us. The reviews helps other listeners to find us. Let us also know what you like best about this podcast. And always remember that the conservation conversation is for everyone. Stay safe and stay blessed. Goodbye.